Our next project just rolled in. It belongs to one of our team members and the whole shop is amped about it. Of course we're doing a lift, wheels and tires, but on what? Let's go check it out. We just started unboxing parts and the whole shop is abuzz with exactly with what's going on. As you can see, they've got everything laid out here and the car is, you guessed it, a 1998 Crown Victoria. It belongs to Rhino Mike. He sprays all of our Rhino lining here in the shop. We're doing a six inch kit from Lifter Brand. We're doing some 31 inch tall tires and some classic Kragers. This thing is gonna be awesome. A total gambler style build and everybody here is absolutely pumped. Believe it or not, there's actually a cult following of these cars and guys that are lifting them. They're kind of divided into two camps. One are the donk guys that are trying to fit the 30 inch wheels with the little rubber band tires. The other group are guys that are running the Gambler 500 with, you know, 31 inch tires ready for off-road use. That's the kind of thing that we're going for. So as we've got this thing all in box, you can see that it comes with new shocks, it comes with all control arms, which is very similar to a TJ, which is in the back. In the front, it's got these big ball joint drops where they go. Um, and we've got a whole bunch of shocks with these interesting extensions. Uh, so these are like little baby parts when we compare to everything else that we normally see. Uh, big old coil spacers. We are also doing a full diff rebuild with a rear rear gear. So we are going to take out the, what are they, 271s or something like that. And we're putting 373 gear ratio in the back with a limited slip. So this is going to be really cool, completely different for us. We've never lifted one of these before. The company that provided all of these parts is called Lift a Brand. Uh, there's two major providers. Uh, I went with Lift a Brand because I actually like this drop ball joint. Um, in a little bit, we'll show exactly how this is installed and where it goes and why it makes sense uh, on cars like this. We are also replacing the coil springs because when you look at it, the rear's kind of saggy. Um, so this should level everything out and provide us with approximately six inches of lift. With all of these adjustable components, we should be able to dial in the alignment and the rear axle location just perfectly, which is awesome. We looked into doing a less lift, like maybe the two or three inches of lift, but the control arms in the back are so short that it really swings the rear axle underneath and it's tough to dial it in. So although six inches seems like a lot, it's really the best option to make sure that everything is dialed in right for perfect alignment. Let's go check this car out before we start taking it and putting it up on the rack. So here it is, the 98 Crown Victoria in all its glory. Looks like grandpa just got out, um, really stock trim, pretty clean. I think he scored this on Marketplace or Craigslist, something like that. But it's a really nice car and you can get it pretty cheap. It's got a V8. I mean, what else could you want? Of course, a six inch lift and some 31s. That's what you could want. It's gonna be awesome. I like this thing. We're gonna probably do some modifications in here maybe, maybe there. I think he talked about probably cutting the front bumper like maybe here or so. So there's gonna be some modifications that go into this thing above and beyond just what we're gonna do in the shop today. It's gonna to be really rad. I'm excited to see this thing under the knife. How's that? Yeah! That was awesome. I want one too.
David, how are we making out with the Crown Vic? Looks like most of the front end is all done. Is that right? Yeah, getting along pretty well. Got the front end together earlier today. I was working on the rear end. Just ran into needing a, an extra part just to make myself a little more satisfied. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, walk us through kind of what we did in the front. Looks like we've got maybe a sway bar drop. Yes. Made out of some simple box tube. Right. We've got this fancy drop ball joint. Mm -hmm. And you can't see it, but I guess there's a coil spring spacer yeah, up the, inside there. The spacer's actually about four or so inches tall, but with the way that it's kind of more inboard on the control arm. Oh, so yeah. four inches here means six inches out here. Yeah, right, right. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, what's going on with the back? We I know ran into a jam nut issue and we are working that out. Let's right. go over to the table there and figure what's figure out what's going on over there. So these are, this is what the, this replaces that, is that right? Yeah, lower control arm on, there's, you know, one per side. Double adjustment, which is pretty nice, but then you get one jam nut instead of two. Right. Um, I've seen before, not the happiest things with threads not having a jam nut. Well, we've so, seen it before, they just like rip out of the yeah, arm. They, they just, just kind of work around in the threads and then end up pulling out. Yeah, there's always a little bit of play there. Yeah. So you get a jam nut, make that nice and secure, and then you'll not have any worries about that. So this is kind of the, this is the coarse thread end. Right. The fine thread ends are like this. And we actually called the manufacturer of this kit. This is a wheel stud. So it's an inch and an eighth by 16 thread pitch, uh, which you can't just buy an off the shelf jam nut for. So what we did is we bought tractor trailer lug nuts, sent them to the machine shop, and they are making them into custom jam nuts so that we can put it all together with jam nuts on both ends. Right. So we'll use the lowers to kind of get the wheel centered under the car. Yes. And then use this upper to roll that axle angle so we can get the drive shaft just right. This thing does not have a rear track bar. Correct. Uh, it has a rear Watts link suspension system, which is also nicely adjustable. You can make them longer or shorter to help keep all the angles happy because you don't want this to over center itself sure. while it rotates around. So, so that you... thing does the same job as a track bar. Yes. In that through the entire range of motion, it's going to kind of keep that axle centered under the car. Exactly. Cool. That's pretty neat. We don't see that on a whole lot of lifted Jeeps. Not, not too much on the trucks and Anything, SUVs, forerunners, no, any yeah. of that stuff. So it must be a car thing. We've got tires and wheels over here. What do you think about those? I'm looking forward to them. Yeah. It's always nice to see a nice little all-terrain on a car, something <laughs> yeah. different. So uh, this car, like I said earlier, is for Rhino Mike. He sprays all of our Rhino lining. And uh, he picked out these Krager D windows, which I think look really, really cool. It definitely captures that Gambler 500 oh, yeah. battle car kind of look. Perfect he appearance for the ideal. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it fits the car well. And then we use these generals. He really wanted something with a big, bold, white letter. And uh, so that's that's kind of how these picked out. And, you know, they're a pretty aggressive tread. This is a 16-inch wheel and a 245-75 16 tire. So right around 31 was, inches yeah, tall. about a 31 then. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we ended up uh, getting these Skyjacker longer sway bar links. I believe they're actually still for a Chevy. They have a ball joint on the one end, which is nice because they'll be able to pivot as a sway bar moves instead of just being a straight bar that kind of doesn't have any movement to it. And they're pretty much the perfect length right on there with it all the way up. It just, just barely moves the sway bar enough to clear everything. The 
you get something maybe for an explorer too? Well, I don't know if the explorer. So the explorer is different. They had yeah, they a were. soft hose. They, also, they, they're both the calipers were in the rear, but they had a soft hose that came from here to a hard line, and then this side was a drop and a soft oh, hose to yeah. this. Can it look like a JK front hose? Not really. No. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> like a JK mounts on a bracket. Like I think we can probably like just call stuff, that like... same place that made those um, hydraulic hoses the other day for the F250 and just have them make mm. us a brake hose. Uh, I just sent Greg to go down and get one made. What if we just cut it right here and flare it and just add some unions? Ooh, oh, unions, yeah. At least it's not, it doesn't say compression. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does the metal, where's the metal line come from? Say, sir. That's a top of like metal line. <laughs> it's really easy. <laughs> yeah. What about a, uh, like those JK ones that we, that would. The fronts. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, yeah, there's some over there that you have like a little offset step and different lengths. Get the rear on the JKs or whatever, do that. Yeah. I just drill another hole in that and. What, for the, oh, for the lock tap thing? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's what I told you. He was asking me if you should get like a true tracker before locker or something. And I was like, man, you probably don't need to. I mean, you'll do mean, sweet burnouts easier, but like, yeah. it'll still probably do them with us, so. <laughs> it will, for sure. Trying to get it as close as you can. All right, that's all you can do, really, without making new control arms. Yeah, hold on. At least four threads of engagement. Dave is trying to dial in perfect uh, rear drive shaft alignment. So, in which case, the the rear diff you want on the same angle as the transmission output. So, you know, like this. That's very exaggerated, but that's kind of what you want going on. And so, what he did is adjust the upper control arm out longer and he ran out of threads, it was getting too short. So what we're gonna have to unfortunately do is set the upper control arm a little bit shorter than what would be ideal. And um, we'll just see what happens if it vibrates or not. It's just gonna be kind of a trial and error basis at this point. Um, we've set the lower control arm so that the tire is centered in the wheel well. And that's just so that it doesn't eat up the plastics. Even still, I think we're gonna have to do some cutting and trimming 
from where just what we were looking at last night. But um, we'll fine tune that once we get it off the alignment rack. Brake caliper would rub on the top of the bump stop here. So in order to fix that, I cut the top of the bump stop off right where these uh, kind of even with a couple notches that were already in there. That was hot. Cut straight across and then it clears. Grind it down, paint it up, make it look pretty again and good to go. We've got the Crown Vic all done. Mike, our tech, is totally pumped about it. He's been driving it for about a week and love how this thing handles. I've nicknamed this car the Crown Royal. It is absolutely awesome. So just to do a final wrap up, there are a couple things that the kit from Lifter Brand does not actually include. So to go over those, the first is the rear sway bar end links. There are no provisions for a rear sway bar end link. So what we ended up using was a lifted, six inch lifted sway bar end link for the front of a Chevy truck, 1500, like 99 to 06 era. Skyjacker actually makes some that worked absolutely awesome in the back and they incorporate a little ball joint in them. So they're really, really nice, much nicer than what came factory. We also had to, on the right rear, include a little brake line relocation so that the brake hose had enough room to travel there. But that was only on the right rear. In the front, there was not as much trimming as we anticipated. We did have to trim a little bit here off the front corner. And there's something we haven't done yet, and it is something with this e-brake line, only on the driver's side. So at full steering lock, the tire rubs that e-brake cable just a smidge. So Mike, the new owner, knows about it. We're gonna address it here in a few weeks in the shop. One thing that's a little bit dangerous are the steering stops. The steering stop is in the front here, and with the new angle and the lift that's there, it actually presses on the caliper at full lock and keeps the caliper kind of wedged open. So we trimmed those down and we're gonna fabricate a little bit something different there. All in all, I really, really like how this thing turned out. It is quite the battle car, Gambler 500 ready. It drives really nice, it handles well. Of course, we did re-gear the back and put a limited slip in there so he's got all the traction to take this thing off-road. Let me know what you think about this car in the comment section. Would you lift one just like it? Is there another car that could do better? Let us know what you think. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. We're cranking out a bunch of cool content like this every single day, every single week. Thanks for following. Have a good one.